Alrighty. <clears throat> Anyways, the Gen Lock update notes. So we got right here. And yeah, I guess we'll just start off with that. What's her uh yeah, what's her lore looking like? When Ray left her warren in the burrows, she pointed her ears towards the pursuit of a mastery of magic beyond any living beings. Her quest led her to the seat of the Ruby Throne, where she found the means to achieve her ambitions. She became fast allies and faster friends with the scion of House Ico, Leon. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> gaining access to the resources of a powerful noble house in exchange for her services and advice. She strives to harness with even greater control and power the chaotic arcane forces that run through the realm and bind it together. A rare magical prodigy, her tale has just begun. Is that a, is that a rabbit pun? She got a rabbit tail? <laughs> the scholar of House Ico pursues perfection, and she will throw the book <laughs> at anyone who gets in her way. Uh, just imagine her primary fire. Hi -ya! Just throw books. <laughs> That'd be great. I would love that. Alright, so she has a support. She's got actually quite a decent amount of health. I didn't pay attention to this in the update show, but 2200 health. That's uh, on the higher side of supports, I guess. <clears throat> and yeah, she's got a very interesting kit. So yeah, primary fire, honestly, kind of boring, kind of basic. You got six shots, you deal 450 damage or 0.7 seconds. So on the low end of DPS, uh, compared to someone like Grok or Corvus, or even Damba. So, yeah, she's not exactly the scariest damage support in the world, but she's got a very just interesting healing kit. So, her alt fire is her chain heal. Basically, just Grok, a uh, shock pulse if it healed instead, and it just bounced between allies. So, yeah, it bounces between allies and heals them. Spirit-linked allies are healed for 30% more, which is her uh, her ability down here. So you tether your spirit to an ally or enemy player. While linked to an ally, you heal for them for 200 and grant them 1% ultimate charge every second. They just say that like it's nothing. 1% ultimate charge every second. You're giving someone ultimate charge. What the heck? <laughs> so that's on the spirit link. And then, of course, you're also healing them for 30% more. I'm kind of sad that it doesn't say how much healing each bounce does on the, uh, on the patch notes here. Because it'd be nice to, you know, see that. But it's not here. So that's a little bit weird. And then you can also link your, uh, your spirit link to an enemy, and it'll reduce their movement speed by 10%, so you'll slow them, and it'll do 50 damage every 0.75 seconds. Oh, so it's really not right. damage goatee, but you can slow them down, I guess, which is nice. Also, let me get some background music in here, because it's quiet. There we go. Yay. <clears throat> Alright. And then her, uh, her other ability. She doesn't have a movement ability at all, which is weird for a support. Usually, you know, you want a good movement ability on a support, like Rover's Vine or Ceres's Shadow Travel. But instead, you've got this defensive ability. So you envelop yourself with Arcane Energy, oh, reducing the right. maximum amount of damage you can take to 275 per instance of damage. And you also go faster for 3 seconds by 40%, which is a lot of movement speed. And it also envelops your Spirit-Linked Ally. So the way this works, for those who either missed the update show or who are watching this when I post it on YouTube, if you get shot by Victor, Right? His shots do less than 275 damage. So Victor will pretty much just shoot you like normal, and it won't really do anything. But if Victor were to hit you with his grenade, it'll only do 275 damage instead of 750 damage. If Knessa snipes you, it'll only do 275 damage instead of 1200 damage. Basically, <laughs> you oh, want to use this right. against big bursts. So against teams that have fast fire rate champions like Victor or Talus, it's not going to be a great ability at all. You'll only get movement speed, pretty much. But against someone like, uh, I don't know, Drogos or Knessa or literally anyone with Burst, it'll be pretty good. It'll be pretty good. And, of course, it also works on allies, too. So you can pop Spirit Link on a tank, hit Envelop, and suddenly your tank is very, very tanky. So it's a very interesting take on an ability. But, of course, she doesn't have movement at all. I mean, I guess it's sort of her movement ability, because you get 40% movement speed for 3 seconds, but it's not something like a Vine, or like a Ghost Walk, or something like that. So, it's kind of a weird, interesting ability. It'll be definitely pretty fun to use and see how it plays out. And, yeah, it's also, you've kind of already got that sort of situational thing, where you're only going to want to use it against certain champions. So, yeah, there's that. And then her ultimate, Vivify. Target an ally and infuse them with life, granting damage immunity for two seconds and healing them to full health after a brief delay so pop it on your tank completely damage immune so they can push in like crazy during those two seconds and then any damage that they had taken already gets healed back up so ideally you want to lose it you want to use it on someone who's low and yeah then you just save their life completely 
Like, <laughs> I, I imagine Cauterize will still affect it because it doesn't say status immunity. It only says damage immunity. So they can still be crowd controlled, I assume. But, and of course, have Cauterize and non-hit effects and stuff like that work. But, I mean, literally just making someone immortal for a few seconds? That's crazy. And if Spirit Link to the targeted player, Ray will also be healed to full. So, but the way they showcase this in the uh, the update show, it kind of looked like you could only use your ultimate on the link to target anyways. So, I think this healing is just a, a given, kind of. I don't know. It's a little bit finicky. It's a little bit weird. And we're definitely going to have to check this out on the PTS. Which, by the way, oh, now's a good time right. to mention. Once the PTS comes out, I will be streaming it on Twitch and on YouTube. Well, I won't be streaming it on YouTube, but I'll be making videos on YouTube. So, make sure to follow me in both places. All right. <clears throat> yep. Dang, rip Grok. Oh no. Guys, don't spoil me. I gotta get to the Grok part yet, alright? If he even is in this update, I don't know. We'll see. <clears throat> when will it come out? That's a good question. I mean, if I had to guess, I'd say late Friday, because that's usually when it's been. But if it's not late Friday, then probably like Monday or Wednesday or something like that. I don't really know, but soon-ish, I guess. Kind of. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> Uh, on to her three talents. So her default talent is extension, which is very basic. Just increase the range at which your chain heal bounces. So you can bounce between a more spread out team. And yeah, you don't got to worry about your chain just falling flat. Uh, her next talent is restraint. Linking to an enemy with spirit link progressively slows the player over three seconds. After three seconds, the enemy is rooted for one second. That looks different to what it was shown in the update show. Wait a, wait a minute. <laughs> in the update show... In the update show, they said that this would, uh, when you spirit linked with an enemy, it would, uh, and then you used your, uh, what, what is it called? Your, uh, your envelop. It's a, they've got some, uh, got some weird stuff going on, because you, a, after linking to someone with envelop, you're supposed to completely 100% cauterize them. What the heck? Um, am I forgetting something, or did I hear something wrong, or I don't, I don't know, I'm confused. They said it would stop them from healing? Yeah. The, the, something's up with that. That's weird. I... Okay. <laughs> well, anyways. Her level 8 talent is Focus. This one does look accurate. So Spirit Sling cooldown is increased to 6 seconds. And it only lasts for 2 seconds. But the effects are tripled. So, yeah. I guess instead of getting... Uh, yeah, 200 or whatever it is... Yeah, instead of healing them for 200 and granting them 1% ultimate charge every one second, you'll give them 600 healing and 3% ultimate charge every one second for two seconds in total. So 1,200 healing and then 6% ultimate charge, theoretically, in theory, or something. I don't know. Anyways, let's take a look at our cards. So we'll see if there's anything interesting in here. You can reduce the cooldown of chain heal after hitting someone with sigil, which I think is her... Yeah, it's her primary fire. Okay. So cooldown reduction on chain heals, increase health. Okay, that's boring. Ammo, boring. Movement speed after earning a killing blower elimination. Boring. <laughs> I want to see if she has, like, interesting cards. Kind of like how Vatu has some interesting cards. Reduce the damage you take for two seconds for each ally hit with chain heal. This effect stacks. And you can stack it up to five seconds per chain. Oh, that's interesting. That's very, very interesting. Okay. So, I guess this will kind of give her some survivability then. Also, can we just appreciate the card art? <laughs> just kind of vibing with Leon. All right. Um, grant 50% reload speed to each player who Chain Heal bounces to? For anywhere from 0.5 to 2.5 seconds. Wow! Oh, yeah! That's like almost max movement, or max reload speed. So, so, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Scuttle Dredge or Damage Damba with Leopori Prayer and this card. Reduce the cooldown of Chain Heal after hitting an enemy with Sigil. Big brain? <laughs> oh, that looks... That looks interesting. Okay. Of course, it's not going to be that strong on someone like Maeve, but for certain team comps, this would be a really good card, I think. Wow. Also, what is, I just missed this card accidentally. After taking 2,000 to 1,500 damage, your next use of Chain Heal does not cause it to go on cooldown. Oh. So if you get really low, your Chain Heal will basically not have a cooldown? That's an interesting card, but that's a lot of damage, too, so I'm not sure how good that one will be. And then grant ultimate charge to each player, which Chain Heal bounces. So she's got two forms of granting ultimate charge. Okay, so <laughs> when they showed her in the update show, I thought she was pretty underwhelming, but these cards, it looks like a lot of her strength 
like, she's got some decent strength in her kit, like with Spirit Link and whatever. But it looks like a lot of her strength will come from her cards. These look pretty sick. These look pretty fun to use. What the heck? That, I, I, I'm excited to use those. Holy crap. Imagine, I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking of, like, the possibilities. That Leopori Prayer, that's got me thinking of, like, Ray plus Dredge combos, or Ray plus Damba combos. That could be cool. Anyway, Spirit Link. Increase the healing Spirit Link provides to your linked friendly target by X amount of health. Alright, cool. Straight up increasing your healing and base kit. But it's a really slow healing ability anyway, so I don't think this one will be too good. Transfer 25% of the damage your Spirit Link targets takes to you, while Spirit Link to an ally... And then you take X amount of that damage. This breaks the health threshold. So that's just like a... Huh, that's just like a weird way to mitigate damage. So you... What? Okay. So put your Spirit Link on Victor, for example. He gets shot by Kinesa. You take 300 of that damage away from him. But then you only take... 65% of that damage if you have this card maxed out. So overall, Victor takes less damage and then gives it to you. But then you take less of the damage he gives to you. Oh, that's... That's a... That's an interesting card. For sure. I'm not sure how strong that's going to be because you're actively taking damage. You know, you're, you're, you're saying, hey, I'll take some of this damage off. You shoot me instead. As a healer. But that still looks like it'd be good. It could be good, though. That is... That's weird. <laughs> what if she is connected to someone who got drug resulted? Yeah, I have no idea. We're going to have to test that on the PTS. And also, back up to her damage mitigating ability, Envelop. We're going to have to test on the PTS if Envelop can save someone from a drug result. Because I'm not sure if it will. I, I really don't know. I, I have no idea. But... Anyways, um, let's see. What was her last card down here? Her last few cards. Linking to a new target reduces all your cooldowns. Okay. And reduce the damage done to by any enemy you're linked to with Spirit Link. Oh, so you link to an enemy, and they do 25% reduced damage to you? Oh. But it says reduce the damage done by any enemy you're linked to. So I assume that means it's not just damage reduction on you. It's basically like, you link to a Kinesa, and she does 900 damage per shot instead of 1200 damage per shot to anyone she shoots. So that's just a permanent damage debuff, as long as you're linked to someone. And then they gotta kill you to do more damage. Oh, that's a... That's gonna be an interesting card, especially that's gonna be an interesting card to run on her damage build. Because while she doesn't have the greatest DPS, this card will just straight up nerf the DPS of anyone who she's fighting. So... <laughs> she kinda makes a fight fair that way. These are some interesting cards. These are some really interesting cards. I, oh, I want to play with this on the PTS so badly. All right, and then Envelop, last final few cards here. Using Envelop reduces your linked friendly target's cooldowns. Interesting. Reduce cooldown of Envelop, okay, boring. Uh, heal when you use Envelop, okay, boring. And increase the maximum amount of damage mitigated by Envelop by 7 to 35%. Okay, interesting. Envelop cards don't look that interesting. I mean, we'll have to see what Enveloping Magic works like works like. Increase max amount of damage mitigated by envelop by 7 to 35 percent. So I assume this means that the threshold of uh, envelop, which is 275, would then be lower, so it'd be something like 200 then? Or something? I'm confused by that card. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to test that on the PTS. I don't understand it. Anyways, cosmetics. So <laughs> yeah, already we got a we got a skin for Ray. No skins for Yagaroth, but we got a skin for Ray. So Beach Bunny skin from the season pass of 2021. It's kind of just an interesting little take on her. Kind kind of nice. Uh, fits the summer theme for sure, since this is coming out in the middle of the summer. Um, Harvest. That's just kind of a base recolor red fiery version and then of course we've got the gold skin which All reminds right. me of Vatu a lot uh in terms of like the uh the general just aesthetic of it the the patterns on the what is this a dress cloak kimono something thing I don't know whatever this uh p article of clothing she's wearing I like the patterns I'm not sure if it'll be as good as the Vatu gold skin but it still looks pretty good nonetheless and yeah of course we've got some emotes which look pretty cool Let's uh, zoom in a little bit more, just so we can... Whoa, that was a lot of zoom. 
Okay, it's kind of weird how it puts them on the left side of the screen. But there you go, you got the emotes. The default emote looks pretty cool. And then we've got this one as well. Neat. She's got some cool emotes, I guess. And then MVP poses. Just kind of chilling. And then just kind of chilling. Alright. Let's scroll back out. There we go. Alright. So next up, we've got the... Uh... <laughs> so did we get a gold skin? Yeah, we got a gold skin for Ray, but not for anyone else, I don't think. Peach Bunny is just a recolor with extra steps. I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, but she's got like a new hat on and stuff like that, so... Eh, I mean, I, I think it's cool, you know. It's more interesting than like Vatu's recolor. Even though Vatu's recolor is amazing. Or uh, his his uh, season pass skin is amazing, don't get me wrong. It's just got more to it, which is nice for Ray. So that's cool. Anyways, Genlock crossover pass. So this is a kind of a crossover collaboration with the Genlock, which is a show I have never watched. And I never even heard of it until the Paladins crossover. So, I don't know. Maybe I'm just bad. <laughs> or, I, I don't know what. But we've got some really sick skins as a result of this crossover. So we've got a larger event pass. Or it's called the crossover pass, actually. But it's basically just an event pass, but longer. So it has 30 levels of rewards. Instead of the usual, what is it, like 24? And, yeah, you've got five skins for five unique heroes. Instead of just four skins for two heroes. So... Yeah, it's a much, much better crossover pass in terms of, like, the amount of content, but it's also more expensive. It costs 750 crystals. So, yeah, I mean, you are paying for more content, so it makes sense that they charge more for this, but for those who don't have that many crystals to spend and that much money to uh, spend on crystals, a little bit unfortunate. But we still have, of course, a few free skins from, like, the free pass. I think the, uh, let's see. Yeah, so the Mave skin is an instant unlock for purchasing, and then I think the Victor skin was the free one. So, yeah. Anyways, let's see. <clears throat> so, obviously, Event Pass is going to have, you know, the extra XP and gold boost. And then we've got Cami Mave, which is honestly a pretty cool skin. When we saw this in the uh, the update show, my favorite part about the skin was the daggers. They looked really, really sick. Most of the weapons in this uh, Event Pass actually look really phenomenal, but yeah. Also, I'm not sure why every one of these guys has a mech in the background. I'm sure it has something to do with the show, but these mechs, I don't think, are actually in the game in terms of, like, skins. So... Yeah. Anyways. Um, then we got Valentina Canessa. She's kind of like a Russian sort of person. And the thing about the gun is... Um, so normally Canessa's carbine, like, it extends when you're sniping and then it shrinks back down when you're in carbine mode. This weapon does not extend or retract. It's just absolutely chunky no matter what. So in third person, she's constantly got this just huge rifle out. In first person... <laughs> There's kind of a disconnect, because it looks smaller in first person, so that it's not like a pay-to-lose weapon in that aspect. Honestly, my least favorite skin of this event pass, but they still did a good job on it. Like, the actual model of her character itself looks fine, and the voice lines are cool. Like, I just don't really like the weapon of this skin. But, anyways, Chase, Victor. Yes, this is the free skin. Honestly, I don't really have any gripes about this skin. It looks great. I mean, the voice lines are pretty chill, and the gun itself looks fantastic, as well as the sound effects. It's just a very solid skin for Victor, and it's free, so... Yeah, don't have to pay money for a cool Victor skin. But hey, <laughs> I'll take it. Then, in my opinion, and I think in a lot of people's opinion, the uh, the highlight of the event pass. The Kazu Zin skin. So, <clears throat> yeah. Hopefully when I take this and put it on YouTube, I'll have uh, like some of the uh, like actual visuals and stuff they showed in the uh, the update show. But... Yeah, this is, a, this is a really, really cool skin. And the neat thing about this is, since Kazu, apparently in Genlock, only speaks in Japanese, the voice pack is also completely in Japanese. So, I don't understand a word he says, because I don't speak Japanese, but for anyone who does speak Japanese, hey, you got a Japanese skin now. That's pretty cool. And of course, like, again, the effects on this skin, the sword, the actual character model, 10 out of 10. It looks great. And I really, really like the skin. And then we've got Yasmin Lex. Which is, yeah, also a pretty cool skin. Guns are solid. And it's just, you know, another really nice looking skin. So, <clears throat> yeah. Pretty nice. Five skins for five different champions in this event pass. And we've got champions who haven't necessarily gotten a skin in a while. Like Kinesa, uh, Lex. So, yeah, pretty darn cool. And then there's also some sprays and avatars and stuff. I don't really care as much about these, but I'm sure some people will be like, Wow, I love the Oh, I love this avatar. Or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they're cool, I guess. <clears throat> and we also got some 3D sprays. Again, not my cup of tea, but they look nice. And if you if you like it, then you like it and you can get them. 
So, yeah. And it also says a note here. All Genlock 3D sprays have special in-game audio that is not present here. So, yeah, just kind of a thing. We also got some MVP poses for these guys. Well, guys and girls, yes. So we got... <laughs> I keep mistaking the Victor skin for Lex, but... You know, we got the Victor MVP pose. Kenneth MVP pose. These MVP poses look pretty basic. For, like, the top two. These look more interesting. Oh, and then Zin with the sword behind him. They look alright, honestly. They're not the most exciting MVP poses I've ever seen. And we've also got some death cards. Dr. Weller, okay. Don't know who that is, but hey. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and then we've also got a death stamp, Bring Mischief. It's like a cup with a little robot in that. That's cool. That actually looks pretty neat. So, yeah, that'll be the event pass. And honestly, I'm excited. All the skins seem pretty good quality to me, so I'm looking forward to it. And of course, we've got the Trials of the Realm. It's not going to say the uh, the trials here, so we won't be able to judge and see, oh, do we have any stupidly difficult trials here? But yeah, it's just the same Trials of the Realm, you know, that we've had. And with some new stuff in there, of course, we got crystals, gold, levels, stuff, things. We got this new loading frame, which, uh, it looks pretty cool. It's animated, which is, you know, it's nice. It's better than you can say for some loading frames. Um, then we've got the avatars, we've got the static sprays, and some more 3D sprays. So, again, not necessarily my cup of tea, but if you like it, you like it, and good for you. <laughs> so, yeah, there's that. And what's next? Oh yeah, the bounty store is coming back, right. <clears throat> so, I think there's a few updates to this. So, let's see. We're reopening the bounty store with more updates to come in patch 6. As we continue to expand the system towards that goal, we will be making certain changes. In the short term, there will be pricing changes in the updated version to compensate for this and in light of exploits from the previous implementation. We're normalizing previous bounty coins such that the players will have between 100 to 1,000 bounty coins when we open the store. For the vast majority of players, this will be an increase from their previous bounce. So you log in, you have more bounty coins. Unless you're somebody who abused glitches, in which case you might be capped at a thousand. Or something. I don't know. Skins that were owned previously will be maintained, but duplicates of each skin are being removed. Uh, okay. And bounty skins will be priced at more bounty coins per skin moving forward, but we've multiplied the rewards from daily quests by 30, and are adding additional ways of earning coins. Overall, we expect players to see more coins and value relative to previous iterations going forward. And they intend to tune numbers. Cool. And, of course, I'm excited for one particular way to get bounties to, uh, bounty coins, which, you know what, let's just scroll down to that. Twitch drops. So, if your account is linked to Twitch, you can earn points for watching Paladins on approved streaming channels. I, <laughs> I'm not sure how I become an approved streaming channel for this, but I kind of want to try. So, I'm definitely going to try hard to get that once that's a thing. And then, yeah, you gain five bounty coins for every four hours of stream viewing. So, if you watch a stream for a while, you get bounty coins. Four hours, though. That's a long time. Jeez. For only five bounty coins? I would do, like, five bounty coins every, like, hour or something. Because most people don't have time to just sit down for four hours of a stream. I don't even stream for four hours long. That's crazy. <clears throat> Anyways. Uh, back up to the top. We got more skins for sale. In the new bounty store, each skin will, be, will still be on sale for the same three-day window, but will keep a rotating stock of three skins, staggered such that one skin will change each, each day. So I assume that you've got three different skins, and it takes a total of nine days to get each skin basically available. So, yeah, you've got, like, skin one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then after that nine-day period is over, you get a new set of three skins that stagger one, two, three. So, yeah, I guess <laughs> if you miss a skin one day, you'll have another day to get it, unless you're just unlucky and it happened to be the last day it was in rotation. So, there's that. And then there's also the Bounty Store event exclusive. Pa players who purchase an event or crossover pass will have access to another skin for the duration of the event. This slot will only be available to players that have purchased the current pass, though the skin itself may be available through other methods such as chest or direct purchase. Please note that this slot remains consistent during the pass and does not rotate out or have limited quantities. And basically, if you own the event pass, you'll buy, you'll be able to buy a, a unique skin for bounty coins, I guess, which is interesting. And then, yeah, additional coin earning. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> Probably the most controversial thing this update, at least I've seen so far. Uh, <laughs> they're adding ads, but they're doing it in a way that is completely optional. So, I mean, I guess I have to make it extra clear because they made it extra clear themselves. If you're playing the game normally and you don't want to watch ads, you don't have to watch ads. 
but they're still adding them. So, starting this patch, we've implemented a new feature where players will have the option of watching ads in-game to earn gold, bounty coins, and other rewards. Now, we know you probably have a few questions, and, want to be, and we wanted to be upfront and clear about a few things. These ads are completely optional. Players that would like to earn rewards via this feature will need to click on the new Earn Free Rewards button on the home menu and opt in for an ad to start playing. If you don't opt, if you don't opt in, you'll never see an ad, and your Paladin's experience will be the same as always. So, no forced ads. But there's still the option for ads if you want free stuff, I guess. And they're of a quality and standard that you see on TV or other mainstream video service providers or streaming platforms, so nothing sketchy. And if you watch an ad, you'll always receive a reward. Every ad watch will reward 100 gold. That's it. <laughs> and you can also earn other rewards like bounty coins and boosters. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, ads are interesting, I guess. <laughs> Uh, I mean, at least they're not, at least they're not forced, though. It, it is an option. If you don't want ads, you don't have to have ads. So, that's good, I guess. And I guess for those people who want extra stuff, you know, and don't mind watching ads, this is a thing, and I guess it means more money for Evil Mojo, too, so. I guess it's fine. It's just, you know, <laughs> eh. It's the idea of ads in my PC game. Oh, yeah, I don't right. know. Anyways, let's just move on. Limited time modes. So... Yeah, there's going to be a bunch of modes. They're only showing two here. Uh, but there will be six unique and two previously popular modes that will rotate through the patch cycle. So, yeah, I think these are two of the new modes that will be in the next update. But they're not going to show all of them here, I guess. I'm not sure why. But I guess they want to keep it a secret so you all get surprised. But there's still two here. So pick any. In celebration of Paladin's 50th champion, which is Ray, we're letting you pick whichever champion you want. Team had already picked them? No problem. Play five Groks if it makes you happy. That makes me happy. So I'm going to play five Grox. You know what? <laughs> uh, this is going to be just a manic mode. Imagine three Agaroths, two Grox, all just stacking on point. But then that's against five Burn Monster Tyrants. Oh, no. <laughs> all right. Hunter versus Hunter. Two gunslingers stand opposite each other. In the blink of an eye, two guns are drawn. When the dust settles, only one of the former comrades in arms will be left standing. Will it be the hand or justice? <laughs> nice typo. Will it be the hand of justice or will it be the godslayer? You decide, and it's guns blazing game mode. So I guess Androxus versus Lex. Game mode. I'm more excited for the pick any. I want five Grox. Give me five Grox. And then, finally, we get on to the customizations. Oh my goodness. Alright, I'm gonna... Hold, hold on, hold on. You didn't see the Vatu skin, alright? I want to go in order of hype. So we've got Toothache Eevee, which is a recolor and sort of retexture of uh, Sweet Shop Eevee, because it adds that hat, but then it also recolors everything. It's much more vibrant, much more rainbow-colored, which is pretty cool, I guess, and it's available in the Bounty Store as the Bounty Store exclusive skin. So I guess this is... If you own the Event Pass, you'll be able to buy this skin from the Bounty Store, and it'll also be available in the Just Desserts chest. So, yeah, there's that. And then, finally, <laughs> uh, the skin, it looks so cool in-game. The effects, the sound effects, the visuals, everything. This skin is, in my opinion, the most hyped skin this update. But, I mean, if you like the Genlock skins more, you like the Genlock skins more. But this one, I need it in my life. Take my money, hi -res. I want this. It's a Vatu skin, full-on demon mode. Full-on freaking demon mode. The kunai looks sick. It's got green visual effects. The voice pack is hauntingly scary. I love it. <laughs> I love it. And it's in the in the Pandemonium chest on July 21st. And July 21st cannot come fast enough. It's 400 crystals. You get the new May Mayhem Vatu skin, and there's also some other stuff in there. Draconic skins, High Priestess Ying, Demonette Maeve. Oh, for me, this chest is good because I only got to spend 400 crystals. I already have the rest of these skins. But if you want to have a try at Mayhem Vatu... You spend at least 400 crystals, but we might have to spend more because that's how loot boxes work. But July 21st, this skin, give it to me, I want it. <laughs> and then, yeah, the other chest, just desserts, you got the new Toothache AV and then some returning skins. This will be August 4th, again, 400 crystals. And yeah, pretty cool, I guess. And then there's also this chest, 400 crystals, August 18th. Got some things inside of it, which are cool, I guess. If you like these skins, then get them. You know. <laughs> uh, nothing really bad about that. And then, finally, we move on to some of the balanced general updates, ranked updates, stuff like that. The good stuff. The stuff that, if you don't care about skins, you came here for. Besides Ray. So, let's start with the general updates first. Bots will no longer purchase items for disconnected players. 
I guess I'll skip this dev commentary. You know, I'll read the dev commentary. Obviously, by the time there's a disconnected player in a match, something has already gone wrong. Nobody wants that. But we've made some changes this patch to try and reduce the frustration for when it does happen. So outside of training matches, bots will no longer purchase items. I feel like this is already in the game, because I haven't noticed bots buying items, but... Yeah, this is uh, something coming, which is cool. No more coming back to the game and having two ranks and an item you never would have bought. So this is good for people who reconnect. For bots who become bots and then the player never reconnects though, kind of a bad thing, but at that point you've already got stuck with a bot, so you might as well just lose anyways. And there's also a disconnected indicator, so if someone who disconnects, you got a disconnected status. So it's much easier to tell when someone's a bot now, which is great. You know, no false accusations of being a bot, and no questioning, are they actually a bot? No, there's just, boom, disconnected indicator. Makes it easy. I like it. <clears throat> and then we've also got the Legacy VGS. Players can opt into Legacy VGS, including VGS lines that were removed with a VGS rework? Hold up! This came out of nowhere! Yeah! Oh my gosh. All right. All right. Well. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So VGS lines from old skins, which had, you know, good stuff like Chancellor Damba. Do shut up. That line, every single line will be back. You can tell people to be quiet again. You can tell them bye. You can tell them nice job. Yes. Why only PC players? I don't know, I guess it's a struggle on console or something? I don't know, kinda of sad that controller players can't use Legacy, if they wanted to. They should have the option, even if it's not, you know, the best option. Or at least for us PC players. Ah, oh, that's great. Now my question is, for skins that have come out later, which also have some of those lines recorded, because you can look on the wiki and see for like some lines, I think like a... Uh, off the top of my head, maybe Pyre Magnus Corvus or something like that. Or even like the default voice packs. I think some of them have uh, some of these old voice lines too. So I assume that they'll have those voice lines too. All right. I'm not sure about that one though, but at least for the old skins. Yeah, we get those lines back. Oh my goodness. All right. That came out of left field, but I'll take it. I knew these two were coming. I did not know Legacy VGS was coming. Oh my gosh. And then skin previewing. We've added the ability to preview the full model of a skin in the pre-match lobby. So you can make informed decisions on whether to sell, it, shell out your hard-earned caps or uh, crystals on them. So I guess if you're in the uh, in the match lobby, you want to click on a skin to preview it. I guess you can do that now. I guess it's a quality of life update. I guess. Anyways, ranked updates. We've also got some hype stuff here. And by hype stuff, I mean one hype thing: three right. ranked bands. So they've added an additional champion band for ranked matches. Instead of two per team, you get three per team, six in total. Honestly. We've needed this for a while now. Two bands was fine two years ago when there weren't nearly as many champions in the game. You know, when there's like 30 to 40 champions, yeah, two bands is fine. But we're hitting 50 champions this next update. Yeah, it was time to add more ranked bands. So this is a really good thing. You have more control over your ranked matches, who you want to get rid of now. So yeah, now I can ban Furia and Io and someone like Leon if I want to. Just get all the annoying people out, you know? <laughs> so... Ah, uh, that's great. And then there's also, you know, new split rewards, gold chests, determined avatar, stuff like that. And for some reason, the previous map update, uh, map rotation was updated in patch 4, and they plan to keep it for the, in effect for the duration of split 2. So I guess we're finally getting a new split as well, which is nice, finally. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm not sure why this is a thing, but it is. So, yeah, that's cool. But three bands, though. Who uses IO unranked? Nobody does, but I can ban Io anyways, because she just annoys me way more than she should. You know? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> anyways, let's see. <laughs> now we can ban Leon, Khan, and Ray to get the entirety of House Ico out of here. Yeah, yeah, that's why they brought uh, three rank bans in, is so that you can, yeah, you can continuously ban everyone from House Ico. That's a, that's a great change. All right, time for the balance. Now, this is a doozy. We've still got half of this entire page left for balance and bug fixes. All so, right! Yeah, there's going to be a lot to talk about here. A lot of talent reworks, too. So, this will be interesting. Dev commentary. Talents are one of the multiple ways in Paladins to customize your gameplay experience. Some talents weren't providing enough to the overall playstyle of their champions, or were underutilized, less liked, or all of the above. These talent reworks are meant to be a fresh take on their champions' playstyles, and a targeted change to specific playstyles that we feel were unhealthy to the game, and in some cases, both. 
We know that there were at least some players who enjoyed the previous version of Things We Changed, and we plan on listening to player feedback and working with the community to embrace the potential of what we intend as new, fun aspects of these changes. Lots of talent changes. This will be interesting. So, I guess starting off with Genos. Luminary. So, <laughs> Genos is no longer the, uh, the support that gives you increased damage. So, yeah, Luminary, bye-bye. No longer 10% increased weapon damage. Instead, all allies who are affected by Astral Mark are healed for an additional burst of 250 when you use Astral Mark. So say you've got an Astral Mark on Victor, you've got an Astral Mark on Fernando, and then you apply a new Astral Mark to, I guess, Ray. Fernando, Victor, will all get a burst of 250. And I'm assuming maybe you also get that burst of 250 on Ray too. I'm not sure if that's how it works. But at the very least, those two people have already had a mark. You'll apply another 250 on top of that. So you want to go from max mark duration, mark cooldown, and just spam them out. And you'll get more healing out of Genos that way, which is nice. I've had a problem with this healing for a while. I suggested percent-based healing, but I guess I've taken a different route with it, and we'll see how strong it is in-game. I still don't think Genos is going to be the best healer, or even, like, a great healer at that. I still think he'll get outclassed by someone like Ceres or Furia, but... It's still an interesting way to kind of make him a bit of a better heal, so that's nice. It will be good for having flanks and team and damage team comps. That's true, Hawk. That's true. It's kind of like a different alternative to Corvus in that matter, which is interesting for sure. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this works going forward. But yeah, no more damage buff from Genos. No more just straight 10 seconds of having 10% extra damage. No, you got to get your damage buffs from other sources now. Yagroth, Hunting Party Tyra, Drogo's Fire Spit, stuff like that. Furia, Solar Blessing. So they're not changing Exterminate, which is weird. They're changing Solar Blessing. So when Pyre Strike comes into contact with an ally, it'll stop and heal anyone on this beam. Has been changed. So it still heals people in the beam, but the healing has been nerfed by a pretty significant chunk, down from 150 for 0.5, or 0 0.05 seconds to 100. So decent nerf to the healing. It's still going to be a very strong healing ability, but it's not going to be, you know, just you're unkillable inside the beam like it was last time. And instead of it just automatically stopping on someone who you hit... It'll stop in place whenever you refire the ability. So you shoot at your beam, and say like, <laughs> with the old Solar Blessing, say like a Victor runs in front of you as soon as you hit the beam, so it just stops on him and then nobody gets healed. Instead, you just fire it through him, he gets brushed with some healing, and then you keep on firing it through, refire it to stop it right on your tank. So, it's pretty nice. You're going to be missing a lot fewer Solar Blessings now, because you have more control over it. And you can also just stop it on a flank. So you use your uh, Pyre Strike, you throw it at a flank, you stun them, you stop it on them, they take a tiny bit of extra damage, and by no means a replacement for Exterminate, but it means that she's got, I guess, better healing now with Solar Blessing. I'm not sure if it'll be people's go-to, but it definitely looks like it'll be a better option than the old Solar Blessing, so I like that. Anyways, <clears throat> let's see. Um, Knessa, e oh? Okay, this one wasn't in the update show. Eagle Eye. So instead of increasing headshots, new. Sniper Rifle gains increased fire and charge rate at the cost of reduced damage per shot, and while scoped, gains increased maneuverability. Huh. Alright! Okay. That's... That's interesting. So I guess, now if you want big bursts of damage, you only have one option now, and that's going to be Steady Aim. So instead of rewarding you with extra damage for hitting headshots, and potentially one-shotting somebody, you don't one-shot anybody now unless they're Eevee. But with this talent, you aren't even one-shotting Eevee. So you shoot faster, it's more forgiving for that, but you do less damage per shot, and you're faster. Well, I guess less slow, not really faster. Hmm. I'll definitely want to give this a try, because a more forgiving sniper rifle sounds interesting. But I'm not sure if this will be meta compared to Steady Aim. Like, maybe maybe for people who have bad aim because it's more forgiving with a faster fire rate. But I'm not sure if it'll replace Steady Aim, though. That's fascinating. Ooh, and also, since you have faster fire and charge rate, actually, those on-hit effects, like uh, the raw healing per shot and the extra ammo per shot, those will be more powerful, too, because you're shooting them faster. You're, fire you're getting those uh, fully charged shots faster. So that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, so I guess the dev commentary, they said it was frustrating to take a large amount of damage from a character at long distances. So they want to change that. Fair enough. Atlas is getting a very interesting change. So, 
Let's see. Unstable Fissure. Instead of uh, just leaving behind an unstable fissure that explodes after three seconds when you activate second chance, instead, if you activate second chance and you're next to another enemy, you rewind them too. So you got two forms of rewinds now. So you've got your, of course, your regular rewind, which you shoot out of your gun. Then you've got your second chance with unstable fissure. More crowd control on Atlas. <laughs> just straight up, more crowd control with this. So yeah, instead of going deja vu and rewinding multiple people that way, you could also use second chance to rewind multiple people, and then further rewind someone with your right click. And you could also just... <laughs> Here's what you can do with Atlas with this talent, right? You ult someone, shoot them with the first charge, shoot them with the second charge, then your ult expires. Then you rewind them with second chance, and then you rewind them with your right click, and they just don't play the game for like 20 seconds. <laughs> uh, so that's the thing for Atlas. Again, I'm not sure if this one will be meta or not, but it looks like it's better than the old second chance. You've got to be very careful rewinding yourself with this talent, though, because, well, that's just another way that you can accidentally screw over your teammates. You accidentally rewind someone who you know was about to die while you're trying to go away yourself, and then you save your life, so you got to be careful. Anyways, Fernando, he is getting two talent reworks, so Fernando's going to be very different next patch. So formidable, his worst talent by far, just straight up, objectively, terrible talent, is getting reworked. So instead of healing you, uh, you now get two charges of your charge, which is an interesting sentence there. And each charge deals an additional 100 damage, so 500 damage per charge. And you're also crowd control immune while charging. So against heavy CC comps, against this Atlas talent, <laughs> uh, you'll have those charges to keep you crowd control immune. And to compensate, the cooldown of charge is increased to 13 seconds. But you still got ways to mitigate that, like with the uh, reducing cooldown of charge on shield card. So, yeah. Just kind of an interesting, kind of like a second alternative uh, off-tank talent. But you could also sort of point tank with it, with the crowd control immunity, because that is, of course, very helpful. And that extra mobility, too, is a thing. So, yeah, there's that. And then Aegis is still going to be a very spammy shield talent. Basically, instead of having an infinite duration and a reduced cooldown, you just, you have a resource bar instead that regenerates over time instead of using a cooldown. Oh, Basically, right. Khan's shield, but bigger. It, straight up. Now, what I'm thinking is, I don't think the cooldown reduction card, Towering Barrier, is going to affect Aegis now. So you might not want to use that in your Aegis build anymore. I'm not sure if that'll affect how fast the resource regenerates. So we'll have to see about that. But, yay. We got Khan's shield on Fernando now. Also, just Reinhardt, but okay. Anyways. <clears throat> Balric. Arctic Tonics is getting reworked too. So, I think this is the final talent rework. But, yeah, so Arctic Tonics, the Dome Shield now costs 35% ultimate charge. So, Snow Globe Barrack. And it places a flamethrower turret with modified values and no shield. So, it doesn't say what modified values. It doesn't say if it has extra range or reduced damage or anything like that. But you basically just have turret spam. So you spam down your normal turrets, and then you get 35% ultimate charge. You put down one of your flamethrower turrets on the point while you're fighting a tank, and they're taking a lot of extra damage now because the flamethrower turrets are insane for DPS. But, of course, it comes to the cost of your survivability. You can't pop a dome shield in the middle of a fight, have that shield around you, and live. So, this really, I think, will open up kind of like an off-tank playstyle for Barrack a little bit, where you're just aggressive with turrets. Because, yeah, <laughs> you can't exactly hunker down in your dome shield with this. I, I question how strong this is going to be, for sure. I don't see this being stronger than Fortify. I don't see this being more meta than Fortify. But we'll just have to see. We're going to have to wait and see what it plays like on the PTS, for sure. Anyways, next up, we're going to the items. We're getting a lot of, uh... Oh, we're getting a lot of item reworks. Not just the ones they went over in the patch show. Okay, so Cauterize is being buffed. <laughs> to compensate for the double support meta. So instead of capping out at 75%, it caps out at 80%. Small change, but still buffed cauterize. So that's good, I guess. <laughs> that's really the only change about cauterize. So yeah. Uh, let's see, Wrecker, similar treatment from 75% to 90%. So Wrecker's getting buffed. Bulldozer's getting buffed. 60% to 75%, just a lot of buffs here. Resilience is also getting buffed. Crowd control effects are going to be uh, even less powerful res with Resilience 3 now. Caps out at 75%. Right. Rejuvenate is getting buffed. 15% to 18%. Oh my goodness. 
And then we've also got some interesting stuff here with Haven and Blast Shields. You can already see, Blast Shields has been removed from the game. Oh no, I guess Drogos and Bomb King are overpowered now. Except they're not. Haven is just raw damage reduction now. Just straight up, raw damage reduction. Reduce the damage you take from attacks by 18% instead of 21%. So they've nerfed the value from 21 down to 18. But you only need to buy one item now to mitigate all forms of damage. So you buy Haven, and Bomb King's not doing much damage. Victor's not doing much damage, just across the board. So you're basically spending 50% less credits to get maximum damage reduction. But of course, the maximum has been reduced down to 18%. So, yeah, Haven's cheaper. Or not really cheaper. I guess Haven's cheaper than buying both Haven and Blast Shields in the current patch. But then... Yeah, it's not as effective, but it's still really effective because it's, you know, one item reduces all your damage reduction. This seems like it's going to be really, really strong. I'm not even going to lie. This seems like just a huge, huge buff. But yeah, Blast Shields is gone because, you know, not really a point with Haven. So yeah, instead we get a new item, Guardian, which increases the effectiveness of shields you create by up to 21%. So stuff like Barrack Fortify with Guardian... You got a lot of extra health on that thing. So, stuff like Half Shell. Stuff like Half Shell. If this... If this increases the health of Half Shell, does that mean potentially, maybe, one more proc of Barrier Reef? Which means maybe... Guardian plus Kronos Makoa half shell might be oh we're gonna have to we're gonna have to test that <laughs> we're gonna have to test that but also uh, it does not affect card or passive generated shield so Octavia passive not gonna be affected uh, cards like the shielding card for Grok not gonna be affected um, it's just like yeah barrack shield Makoa shield I assume this also affects Torvald shield like Pretty sure it affects Torvald Shield, so indirect Torvald buffs, I guess. I don't know. And the cost is 300, so it's the same price as Haven. So this will be interesting. Also, Veteran got rid of the last right. item on this list here. Um, instead of healing for an additional percent of your max health every second while out of combat, I thought they were going to rework Veteran to just make out of combat healing happen faster. But no, Veteran increases your maximum base health. <laughs> Uh, so it's not uh, it's not a flat numbers. It's not like you can pick EV by veteran three and you've got three hundred extra health. No, it's a percent based thing. So it's going to be stronger on tanks. So it caps out at twelve percent extra health. It costs two hundred fifty now instead of one hundred fifty. But picture veteran now on someone like Rom or Yagroth. Yagroth's going to get I think someone said in the chat earlier when we were talking about this like seven hundred twenty extra health if you max this card out. I'm pretty sure. Uh, fact check me on the math I guess. But, yeah, Veteran on tanks. <laughs> Actually going to be viable. You get Veteran, you get the uh, the buffed Haven, you get the buffed Rejuvenate, and you get Guardian. Tanks are going to be nuts next patch with all these items. They're going to be nuts. But, of course, if you buy a Veteran, Guardian, Haven, and Rejuvenate, you don't buy Cauterize. So, yeah, uh, that's a bit of a trade-off, I guess. But still... This is a this is a thing now. <laughs> oh my gosh, poor Eevee. Eh. No benefit from Guardian. Reduced. I, I mean, I guess Haven's still good on her. Pretty much no reason to buy a Veteran. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, just buffs across the board with items. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Anyways, we finally get onto the general balance changes now. So this will be interesting. Oh my goodness. Uh, let's see. Atlas, Temporal Divide, greatly increased the size of Stasis Field, but its cooldown was reduced by 50%, and they increased the oh, cooldown to 65%. Right. Wow. Even longer cooldown on the big wall now. Jeez, you're never going to see the big wall. <laughs> okay, maybe, uh, maybe Unstable Fisher will be meta for Atlas, with Temporal Divide just getting nerfed again. Alright. <clears throat> Barrack. Okay, um, nice, nice typing there. <laughs> buy veteran on Torvald with tank build. Ah yes, buy veteran, buy uh, buy guardian. Boom, Torvald OP. All right. Um, so Tinkerin got buffed, more damage. All right, cool. 
Combat repair. Healing your turret while standing near it has decreased scaling. Decreased health scaling on forged alloy. Win. Man, when coupled with the bulldozer nerf, or bulldozer buff, I mean, where it does more damage to the foibles now, it certainly not going to be feeling so good. Ooh, and one man scrap nerf. Or one man scrap nerf. That's huge. So instead of 30% reduced cooldowns, only 25% now. Oof. Okay. Lots of barrack nerfs then. And on top of that, architectonics work. That's going to be interesting. <clears throat> Alright. Well, let's see. Inara changes. What is she getting? So. Increased healing while standing in Warder's Field on Caretaker. Okay. Uh, increased healing while Earthen Guard is active on Stone Bulwark. Earthen Guard has an increased duration now. Okay. Interesting. And Impasse has a reduced cooldown. So, Inara buffs. <laughs> Inara has been a staple of the front lines, but we feel she can use a couple of minor buffs to bring her to a slightly better spot. So, Barrack's getting nerfed, Inara's being buffed. They might be on the same level now. Although, maybe not. I don't know. Does anyone actually use these two cards? <laughs> I just use you go for damage reduction cards, but okay. Alright, Makoa. Cannon. Increased maximum damage falloff range. Okay. Is that a buff? Maximum damage falloff range. Yeah, I think you can shoot slightly farther now. And hitting Yagroth with a Dredge Anchor will now apply a one second stun. Before it would just bounce off her. Now you can actually use it to stun her. So that's kind of a nice quality of life change, I guess. Cool. Now, does this mean that if you hit Yagroth with Dredge Anchor, apply the one second stun, will Pluck then do bonus damage to Yagroth? I'm not sure. <laughs> not really sure. Jeez, there's so many tanks here. Terminus, Necromantic Might. Reduce the scaling of the damage required to generate a Calamity Blast charge. So, what this means is that. If you run Necromantic Might, it'll take more damage now to get a Claimed Blast charge. So, yeah, it looks like they're kind of nerfing that, which is good, because Infinite Siphon build is pretty scary. Um, ooh, okay, Devastation. Heal for enemies hit by Calamity Blast. It looks like it was affecting shields and stuff, too, because it says now it only affects players' pets and illusions. Okay. It watches. Uh, generate Power Siphon Charge for each enemy hit with Massacre Axe. Also got the same treatment. Same thing with Abomination. Uh, yeah, just affects fewer things now, I guess. Cool. It's your boy! <laughs> Torvald! Alright, what's going on with this boy? What's going on with this dude? It doesn't look like a full rework, but it looks like he's got some buffs. So, Protection. Uh, they increase the shield value of Protection to 650. Up from 500, so base kit protection is a bit more valuable now, but they increased the cooldown from 6 seconds to 9 seconds. So it's a bigger shield, but it's uh, you can spam it less. I'm not sure if 3 seconds is really worth the extra 150 healing, or 150 shielding, but okay. We'll just have to see how that feels, I guess. You're going to have to be a little bit more careful with where you put your protections now. And of course, I guess this can be buffed by uh, the new Guardian item too, so that's cool. Nullify has increased range and reduced cooldowns. Okay. No bonus damage, which is kind of what I wanted to nullify, but... Alright, more range, more... Or, uh, shorter cooldown. Cool. Off tank Torvald. Yeah, let's go. Uh, recharge has reduced cooldown as well, so more personal shields and gauntlet. Ooh, gauntlet has more damage per shot. Off tank freaking full frags Torvald. Let's go. We got buffs for that. Oh, and Hyperbeam got extra damage, too. But still no crowd control immunity in Hyperbeam. That's weird. He really needs that. It would just be such a nice quality of life buff. I don't know why he doesn't get that. But, all right, let's see. We would like to invest the time and resources it would take to make significant sweeping changes to Torvald, as we think he deserves it. Thanks, Grandpa. In the short term, however, we feel he can use some love across the board. Okay. So, I guess maybe sweeping changes will come later, but these are just some nice buffs in the meantime. Still not going to be, like, super top-tier tank or anything, but... I guess he's better, sort of? <laughs> oh gosh, Torvald. Alright, Yagaroth, the final tank on this list. So let's see, Piercing Quills. They removed the increased damage taken by enemies hit with Piercing Quills after being affected by Caustic Spray. Oh! Okay, so what I said earlier with uh, Luminary being nerfed and no longer having uh, the damage buff. I said you could go Yagaroth for that. I guess you can't go Yagaroth for that. Well, right. <laughs> another nerf to Yagaroth. Okay. Primal Vision. Let's see. They reduce the interval between pulses, so they happen more frequently now. Reduce the duration of Primal Vision by 10%. And reduce the duration enemies are revealed by 15%, so the Primal Vision is nerfed as well. Caustic Spray has increased range and effectiveness. Or increased range and effective range. Okay. 
So she got two nerfs. And then a buff. Sort of. Okay. Yagroth. Weird. She's still probably going to feel bad to play, honestly. I don't know. Let's see. Let's check out the damage champions now. So Mortal Skewer. Ooh, Dredge is getting a healing nerf. Okay. That makes sense, because his healing is ludicrous with Mortal Skewer right now. You get 400 healing per enemy hit with Harpoon. <laughs> with Hurl? That's ridiculous. So that's going down to, I guess, 70 per tier instead of 80? Alright, cool. Inferno Cannon, reduced damage per hit. Alright, nice. No card changes here, so I guess the build that I've been enjoying recently is still crazy, but a nerf to Inferno Cannon's damage? That's good. A lot of people are going to be really excited about that, because it's needed it. And let's see, Frost Bomb. Um, they increase the minimum damage on detonation by 5%, so more damage, and decrease the distance required for maximum damage by 10%. That's good, because I've noticed with Frost Bomb, you know, you try and get those quick roots, but it, didn't, it then just doesn't do much damage, so... I like this change. I like these changes to Amani. That's good. Infernal Cannon. Not as busted. Frost Bomb. A little bit better. Good stuff. Good stuff. Tiberius. Oh, we're already down to the T's. I guess not too many damage champions are being changed. Tiberius. Let's see. Vicious Assault. Uh, so instead of doing 900 damage in a 20 unit radius on area, uh, area on landing, it has reduced damage. So from 900 to 600. But you get two charges of Crouching Tigron? Are you telling me Tiberius has an actual talent now for Vicious Assault? <laughs> Two charges of Crouching Tigron? Alright. That's kind of what this talent is needed, honestly. Because even with the 900 damage, there's just no reason to run it. Because it's so unreliable. But double the mobility on Tiberius now? Ooh. Okay. Jeez. That's crazy. Old Buck Bounce House, lol. Yeah, exactly. It's, he's got that old Buck talent, which gave him two charges of jump. Oh, that's nuts. But of course, keep in mind, I mean, his his jump is worse than Buck's jump, though, in terms of, like, air control and stuff like that, so do keep that in mind. Combat Trance. Reduce attack and movement speed increase from 30% to 25%. So, Combat Trance nerf. Good stuff. Love to see it, because Combat Trance is annoying. And Test of Strength. Heal for every second while Combat Trance is active has been nerfed by a very tiny bit. You're still going to have a lot of sustain in Combat Trance, but it's been scaled back slightly, so... All good things for Tiberius, I guess. I mean, well, these two aren't good for Tiberius, but they're good for Tiberius's stance in the meta, so that's nice. And I'm excited to try out the new Vicious Assault now. An actual talent for this dude? Heck yeah. All right. Let's see Tyra. It's happening! Yes! Tyra freaking rework to In the Fray. <laughs> yes! Okay, so... Yeah, the uh, the damage reduction card that's just nuts on Tiberius, or uh, Tyra, Tyra, not Tiberius, where you would take 20% reduced damage for 3 seconds after using the launcher, but it's stacked, so you could have like 40% damage reduction. It no longer stacks. Yes, it just refreshes the duration instead. And I actually didn't expect this part, the increased scaling, but they increased the scaling so it caps out at 25% damage reduction now instead of 20%. Honestly, I would have been fine with just keeping the 20%. But, I mean, <laughs> this is still exactly what I wanted. That's, that's exactly what I wanted for Tyra. Just this change right here for In the Fray. I've been wanting it for months. It's finally here. Oh my goodness, that's great. Just no longer stacking on the End of Fray. Yes! Awesome. Alright, next up onto the healers. Solar Blessing. Yeah, as noted in the rework section, reduce healing. Yeah. Light Forge. Current hitting Kindle Soul reduces the cooldown of Pyre Strike by 5 seconds, and it can happen once every X amount of seconds. Now, hitting Kindle Soul increases your movement speed by up to 40% for 0.6 seconds. That's a very short time to have 40% increased movement speed. Okay. Interesting. So I guess they're kind of nerfing the spamminess of uh, Pyre Strike then with Light Forge. Because you could run this card as well as the card which reduces it on your uh, movement ability hit. But... Yeah. <clears throat> Anyways. Uh, let's see. Grok. Oh no. My boy! It's getting nerfed. Oh, he got two of them. Oof. Okay. So this healing totem I wanted. This healing totem change I wanted, right? Increase the cooldown. I, I wanted that nerf to make it more balanced. But they really had to do my Totemic Ward talent like that. Just taking it down from 30% increased healing to 10%. So instead of 390 a second, it does 330 a second right now. Which means in total it'll do 990 healing per second, I'm pretty sure. Which is still close to 1,000 heals per second. So if you stack all three totems, it's still crazy. Area healing. Ah, I really didn't want them to do that to Totemic Ward. 
if they were also going to do the healing totem nerf, but they're just bringing up both of these. Okay. Yikes. Well, fine with this change. Honestly, I asked for that. Just straight up, like, in my grok guide. But this one. Ouch. Alright. Grover. Vine. <laughs> this patch is so good. <laughs> <laughs> they just keep bringing out these things that I've been asking for, just completely out of left field. <laughs> Which is, I didn't expect them to actually listen and add this, but... Okay, Vine no longer targets allies. I've been complaining about that for months. <laughs> Years, probably, at this point. Like, <laughs> I've just been saying, I would like Vine so much better if I could only target terrain. Because, yeah, this exact reason right here. Frustrations players experience with Vine to an ally who runs in front of them. Thanks! <laughs> Jeez. Alright. Let's see. Ren's Soul for Ceres. Detonate your soul over the stacks on enemies, yada yada yada. Increase damage per detonation, but increase the cooldown. So, less spammy now for your uh, your talents, uh, Soul Collector, and Agony. Which I guess is a fair way to nerf those, and it's only one second, so it's fine. And a tiny bit of extra damage. Honestly, I didn't really think Ceres needed this change, but I guess you do you, high res. And fade to black. Reduce the cooldown of shadow travel after activating Restore Soul. Can now only happen once every five seconds. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Because whenever you run this card, you get Chronos 3. It feels like you have a shadow travel every, like, four seconds. So, I guess this kind of nerfs her survivability, which, you know, it can be annoying trying to flank a, a Ceres. And she's just shadow traveling. <laughs> like, just constantly. So, alright. That's fine. That's fine. And Ying. Last healer before we move on to the flanks. So, Resonance. Um, they increase the speed at which illusions travel in Resonance, and they also increase the explosion damage from 500 to 550. So there's more of a reason to pick this now instead of focusing Lens, if you want area damage. Cool. Buff to that playstyle. I'm fine with that. Just don't pick Resonance Solo Healer, or I swear I'm going to be mad at you. Just don't, don't do Resonance. Don't do Resonance Solo Heal, guys. Ah, but hey, cool. You know, if you got a second support on your team, you got the nerfed Grok, you can bring out the buffed Ying, and boom, there you go. Alright, finally, we got a bunch of, uh, got a bunch of flanks here, so let's get started with Koga. Uh, submachine guns, okay. His submachine guns are being buffed in terms of their damage. Not to the way they used to be, which is 40 per shot, but up to 38 per shot. So, right in the middle of the nerfed and buffed damage. Bit of a bump as main numbers, you know what, dev commentary, you're exactly right. I am fine with this, that's great. Alrighty. And Lex. I keep coming through with the good changes, man. Damage increase has been nerfed from 30% to 25% on freaking Discovery, dude. <laughs> That's exactly the number I asked for, dude. It's like a freaking summer Christmas present. What the heck? Alright, sweet. Well, toning down Discovery Lex. Love to see it. Let's see, Maeve. Rogue's Gambit. Alrighty, so they buffed Rogue's Gambit. Not only do you reset the cooldown after earning an elimination, but you get more damage on the pounce. So instead of 10%, you get 15%. And you also reduce the cooldown of pounce by 2 seconds on Rogue's Gambit. So even more mobility on Maeve. Nice. Rogue's Gambit was my favorite talent for Maeve. Nice to see it getting buffed. Moji. Ooh, there's some changes here. Alright. Familiar Spray has increased range. Scamper has increased speed. Bon Appetit. Your target has their movement speed decreased by 10%. Ah, nice. So at base kit, you don't need to buy Nimble now in order to actually eat your Bon Appetit target. <laughs> awesome. Sweet. Okay. These are some nice changes to Moji. I'm still not sure if they're going to bring her into the meta in the same, like, to the same strength as, like, Lex or Androxus or something like that. But these are some nice quality of life changes. I like it. We got our boy Vatu. Alright. Oh. Perfect. Just literally one tiny change. Alright. So decrease the amount of time before teleporting from 0.4 seconds to 0.3 seconds. Awesome. You know what? I didn't want Vatu to be changed that much, and he's not going to change that much. Dev commentary. Vatu is in a pretty good state. Nice. And finally, Vora. Alrighty. Obliteration. They reduce the lockout time after using Obliteration. So that's pretty cool. And Harbinger's Wrath. Okay, so they didn't remove the damage immunity on her ult, but it looks like they've changed it in other ways. So you're, you're slowed by even more while the ability is active, down to 60%, and you increase the ultimate energy co cost of this ability. So it's more costly to perform the classic Armageddon retreats now. Alright, fair enough, and that's going to be the last 
of the balance changes here. A lot of good balance changes, honestly. I am really excited. Grover change, Tyra change, Moji changes, Furia changes, just so many good changes here. I'm actually really excited for these balance changes, honestly. Most of them, at least. Pretty cool. And then we're finally at the bottom. We got, oh wow, we got a lot of bug fixes. Okay, let's start at the top, I guess. So, fix an issue where some champion's footsteps were unusually quiet or loud. Koga, looking at you. Um, fix an issue where lobby chat in the end of match lobby would continuously scroll back down to newly sent messages if the player scrolled up in the lobby chat for any reason. I thought this was just intentional, because game's whack, but I guess it was a bug that's been in the game for years now, and that's finally fixed. So now if someone said something toxic to you, you want to scroll up and screenshot it, it's easier. Cool. Uh, various issues where projectiles could get stuck on Splitstone Quarry. Cool. Fixed issues where projectiles could be accidentally thrown in areas that were not in the traditional game space on Splitstone Quarry. Alright. Fixed an issue where some of the fish on the walls near the capture point were blocking movement on Fish Market. Oh no. <laughs> not the fish. Uh, spawn doors is playing incorrectly on Timber Mill. All right. Okay, that's been fixed. Cool. Uh, fix an issue where some individual pieces of Jaguar Falls that should have had projectile collision did not. Interesting. Um, I guess they didn't, did they, <laughs> I'm not sure if they fixed the, uh, the just missing texture on Jack Falls, but okay. Uh, players getting into annoying permanently falling states from colliding with certain areas of the map on Frog Isle. That's been fixed, okay, cool. These all just look like generally good fixes, honestly. Oh! Fix an issue where players could stand on the metal chimneys on top of buildings on Fish Market. No! My smokestack is gone. <laughs> my vantage point for Knessa. No. <laughs> okay. Well, that's cool. Let's see, let's get into the champion bug fixes now. Androxus fixed an issue where Androxus' quick draw card would heal him when he hit shields into playables with his revolver weapon. Cool. Fix an issue- oh my goodness. This issue just right. keeps popping up. Fix an issue where Corvus's projecting ability would allow him to get above the normal play space of Primal Court, Jagger Falls, and a few other maps. Oh my goodness, Corvus, you silly, silly champion. Imani fixed an issue where Imani's Frost Bomb ability and Frostbolt weapon was displayed incorrectly on the Death Recap UI. Okay, cool. Um, fix an issue where Iowa's ultimate begun could push players out of bounds on the capture point on ice mines. All right. Genesis ultimate. Fix an issue where Genesis ultimate through time and space would sometimes fail to do damage even when the visual effects indicated that it would. Yay, it's hard to get up Genesis now. <laughs> uh, let's see, Lex could get more ammo than intended when he had the Death Hastens talent equipped. Interesting. Fix an issue where Leon's presence ability was too quiet when she had Merrymaker equipped. Okay. Moji could get stuck in the Terra Mill spawn room until the start of the following round, really? Okay, well, that's a good issue that I've never seen. Just like this Ceres issue I've never seen, Convergence apparently could pull players through maps. Through the map at specifications on Ice Mines? Okay, cool. Ooh. Ooh, Vora. Fix an issue where Vora's ultimate Harbinger's Wrath was granting more damage resistance than intended? Okay. Another nerf, which is really just a bug fix. Alright, cool. Fix an issue where Vora's Dark Siphon ability would not consume darkness stacks if it dissipated at its maximum range rather than hitting a target or the collision. Okay. And fix an issue where Vora would not gain darkness stacks when hitting a damage mean targets with a deadly scythe weapon. Okay, cool. Vora fixes like that. And finally at the bottom, fix an issue where Willow's lobby idle animation was too loud in the match lobby. And Yagroth. Fix an issue where the effects provided by Yagroth to her teammates from the site pick at Strength Town incorrectly affected non player allies. Okay, cool. Didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> Anyways, this is a massive update. So many balance changes, so many new skins, brand new champion. I'm looking forward to a lot of the stuff here. I'm looking forward to a lot of these balance changes. Just so many fixes and things that I wanted for so long that's finally in this game. And also, yeah, we got some skins and stuff too, which is nice. And of course, Ray. We're going to have to experiment with her because she seems very interesting. Also, can't forget the item changes buffs to a lot of things that need buffs, and also some really interesting new items, which might be busted. Maybe. Possibly. Potentially. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this next update. But, of course, that is going to be the end of this live stream. and I guess if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, once I eventually post it on YouTube in video form, that'll be the end of the video, so if you guys have enjoyed, then yeah, make sure to follow me on YouTube and Twitch, because I will be streaming the update show on Twitch, and I'll be making videos about it on YouTube. So to go check me out in both of those places there. Also check out the Discord server, which is linked down below. If you're on Twitch, type in Mark Discord, or if you're watching this on All YouTube, right. yeah, literally just in the description. And yeah, I guess let's go ahead and just find someone to raid.